Welcome back, everyone. We're back with another mainstream episode this week, and as always, I'm joined by my co-host Corey. This guy. How are you doing today? Tired, very. Worked a lot. How are you? I'm tired. Worked a lot too. God damn. <laughs> Great work, minds think, think alike. I worked like 23 hours the past two days. So. Yeah, uh, I had off Sunday. So 20-something hours <laughs> last two days, I guess, too. Fuck, we work a lot. Yeah, we do. We should go on strike. I see, like, yesterday was our, like, Taste the Tide event, that fancy event. Yeah, we you were talking weeks. about that. Yeah, it's one of my favorite things to do now. Yeah. Yeah. I, I got to make it to one of these one day. Uh, I want to taste the tide. It's a little costly. I don't fucking care. What do I look like? Someone that doesn't eat? Um, We only have two left this year, though. I'm not going to go this year. <laughs> I'm at work, and by the time you're that's done, or I'm done, that'll be done. We'll all be done. North Pro. Uh, so as always, well, I didn't even get the brand, the banner stuff up. There we are. No, wait, wrong one. There we are. What, what was the old one? The other one was maritime. Ah, uh, we're due for maritime episode though, but we are due. Uh, All right. But news and notes. Uh, first piece of news, uh, Afa has passed away. Yeah. Uh, what was it? Weeks after Sika. Yep. Um, listen, you gotta you gotta mention that the Wild Samoans in the late seventies, early eighties were probably the top tag team in the WWF. Um, you know, it, 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 they're two guys that are known as a tag team, and to me, I respect that a lot because you don't have that anymore. They always split up. They stayed as a tag team when off a. Uh, called it a career Sika continued to to wrestle a little bit and feuded with Hogan on a Saturday night's main event that's a big payoff right there but um you know 81 years old you know you did your time on this earth uh rest in peace off uh, rest in peace Sika wild Samoans reunited again yep uh first piece of news aside from that uh Zack Saber Jr has won the G1 climax it's the 34th one <laughs> And he will challenge Tetsuya Naito October 14th. So the story here is he refused to take the shot at Wrestle Kingdom because he wants to win the title. And that's October 14th against Tetsuya Naito. He's taken it. You don't do this and don't change the belt. Um, he wants to win the belt so he can defend the title in, I believe, England. They have a big show coming up and he's going to defend the belt there. This begs the question, what happens with whatever wrestle kingdom name is? Cause it's not wrestle kingdom anymore. It's like wrestle wrestle dream. Was that, is it? it wrestle dream? I thought it was that, but I felt that it was a, a female wrestling promotions name. Uh, if it's wrestle dream, that that's fine. I, I think saber walks in as champion, but who, who challenges another question here? What was the point in t putting the belt back on Naito if he's just going to lose it? Why not keep it on Moxley? Why not do Moxley yeah. versus Saber? What, what was yeah, wrong um, with that? Uh, has Moxley been on AEW? No, he hasn't been on AEW at all, has he? I haven't seen him in a while. So uh, he's, hasn't he been wrestling in Mexico? It's possible. Um, I don't know. It's a, it's a questionable booking decision for me. Am I for Zack Sabre winning the IWGP World Heavyweight title? Yes. 100% yes. His reign as TV champion, although long, was very interesting. Uh, Zack Sabre Jr., he, he fits the quality of wrestler that New Japan, you know, pushes. You know, he was a junior heavyweight tag team champion at one point. He won the tag titles. He won, you know, the TV title. Uh, only the second non-Japanese wrestler to win the G1 after Kenny Omega. Still no Americans, unless you count North America. Omega's Canadian. Sabre's a British guy. So, yeah. very interesting stuff. Uh, congratulations to Zack Sabre Jr. I think it's a main eventer in the in the works right now. 
Yeah, definitely. I think this is very well deserved uh, once he wins the title, obviously. Yeah. Winning the G1 is, is a great thing, though. It's a huge accomplishment, but because you have that extra stipulation, him losing to Naito makes zero fucking sense. Zero. Why did you waste the G1 there? Oh, well, he, sure, he was G1 winner. I, I, I don't get it if Naito wins. I, I still don't get why Naito won the belt back. Maybe Moxley needed to drop it or something like that. Maybe Naito is a transitional champion, but, you know, only time will tell what happens. Um, I'm looking forward to it, though. I am, too. Uh, next piece of news here. Uh, Alberto El Patron defeats Nick Nemeth, who was accompanied by JBL for the AAA Mega Heavyweight title. I got a few things to say here. First off, I'm, do you want me to start with the shoot or with a funny thing? Uh, do funny first. Triple A did a pre-show on YouTube oh, to hype yes, their, their pay-per-view and just never stopped recording. So the entire Triple Mania event was shown on YouTube for free. For, and probably, I think it lasted another 33 hours after the show ended that it stayed up. So you could go watch Triple Mania live, or not live, but free on YouTube. Triple A, I don't know what it is. You watch Triple A and you're like, why is this company still a thing? This is TNA in the early 2010s. <clears throat> they fuck up everything. Every event that they have has to start with. Antonio Pena's widow coming out and the flag of Antonio Pena and somebody else and the urn holding him and that song in the background, Lucha Libre. It's so fucking, ah, oh, man. So anyway, I want to shoot on this for a second. Alberto Del Dipshit. This guy sexually assaulted his girlfriend at the time and threatened to take her three-year-old kid, dump him in the middle of the road, and leave him there to die. All right? This guy should be blacklisted from professional wrestling. Shame on AAA for not only booking this guy, but pushing this guy as your main eventer. I'm out. Hold on. Do I still have it? No, oh, shit. I deleted Shooting with Corey? Banner. What was yeah. it? Uh, uh, <coughs> Corey ran. Or, ran or, nah. or something like that. But no, d uh, just okay. He's a former WWE champion and all that. The things that he did is appalling. Well, the first and things he did was with Soraya there. With Soraya, and th that should not be on. That should be mentioned too. But sexually assaulting this woman and threatening to kill her kid. Yeah, it's he's a scumbag. He's a scumbag. He, it infuriates me that Triple A decides to push this guy because he's a former WWE star. Embarrassing. There's a reason why you don't see him anywhere else, though. Exactly. Exactly. Like, uh, I know his father. I don't remember if his dad is still alive. His dad was Dos Cars. Dos Cars. Dos Cars Jr. Were, Jr. was Alberto before he went to WWE. Uh, I don't know if he's just friends with the people there. Like, Nemeth, you know, winning the title and holding it for 112 days. That's fine. JBL being there. How random is that? Like, yeah, is that's... that, is that to get heat know. because of the Eddie Guerrero thing? Like it, it was it confusing. It was confusing, but, uh, I had seen that Del Rio was going to get the title shot. And my immediate reaction to that was they're going to put the belt on this guy again. Again, yep. they're pushing this dipshit to the moon. So, other matches on this card. Uh, Matt Riddle has won the AAA Cruiser World Championship. Yeah. Um, so, I follow a Lucha Libre podcast called Club Lucha. And I'm in the process of finishing their AAA Triple Mania review. And they said Matt Riddle had trouble getting to lightweight. And now he's trying to get the cruiserweight or something like that. Or middle, he was middleweight. Anyway, cruiserweight, I don't know what the weight is there. 
but apparently it's like 115 uh, 215 or, or in under under 200 pounds and riddles jack so if, i know if it's they, rest if they go by like wwe it was 205 205 but i'm not sure what because mexico especially uh, cmll them it's very boxing oriented so you have like like four pounds will make the difference We'll have a light heavyweight, a super light heavyweight, a cruiserweight, a super cruiserweight, an ultra heavyweight, you know, type these types of things. A uh, riddle getting another belt. Uh, uh, uh. New Japan put their TV title on riddle and then quickly took it off because something had happened. He didn't he get like charged with something or yeah, something had happened something like that a while back. Uh, Triple A is desperate. Yeah. Going with Del Rio, going with Riddle, and then going with the next point that you're going to make. Former Jinder Mahal and Satnam Singh win the Triple A tag titles. So this is uh, so weird. Um, so you have three former WWE stars. One current AEW star. And none of these matches were the match of the night, by the way. I did get to see uh, Vampiro's retirement match, and it was like a cinematic match. That was pretty fun. A good match it was not, but it was fun. Um, I don't know, man. Triple A, it's, it's a mess right now. Uh, I only have two other pieces of news. First one is Bob Backlin is battling dementia right now. You know, I heard that too. When you said Bob Backlin, my immediate thought was like, oh no, did I miss another death? <laughs> no. Um, Backlin, that, that, that doesn't surprise me. My favorite Bob Backlin moment outside of WWE and I guess he did it in WWE too. He had this like crazy Bob character, Mr. Bob Backlund. And he would like point at the camera and he'd say, I never ate marijuana. <laughs> and he, in TNA, he said the same thing. And he's, he presents a cup of piss to Jim Cornette like to prove that he does not eat marijuana. And Jim Cornette's reaction is, it's got chunks in it. <laughs> so that, that's the one thing I remember. One of the greatest from the early years of the WWF um, or WWWF, white meat baby face. You know, you can't get more white meat baby face than Bob Backlund. Yeah, you know, I remember no, when you he, can't. You can't, I remember when he was feuding with Bret Hart. It's like Bret Hart, long hair, colorful, tan. <laughs> Look at Bob Backlund. Child's haircut, pale dad bod, blue trunks. I think he blue was. trunks. And he used to do this thing where he'd like, he'd like, like, I don't, it's a wrestling thing where he'd like sort of like go fast and like go to his knees and then just start squatting up and down like a duck. And it was like so weird. Uh, Bob Backlund in the WWF when he went crazy, uh, they did not capitalize enough on that because they had lightning in a bottle. And, and I think if you have Diesel win the Royal Rumble and have him beat Backlund at Mania, I think you save Diesel's uh, reign there. But they had to quickly take the belt off Backlund because he was old, because 43 is old, apparently. Back then, and it was. Back then, him dad bod. Um, so, yeah, Backlund, uh, you know, it's, it's unfortunate, but uh, that's the wrestler's life right there. It is. And the last piece of news, uh, we touched on this last week. Uh, Jacob Fatu was never injured. They're really just keeping him off TV to have... That I don't believe that at all. I don't believe that at all. And here's why. On SmackDown, he came out with a walking boot. Moved fine. Moved absolutely fine. But had a walking boot. So I figured, okay, it's going to be part of the storyline. Never mentioned. So, is he injured, injured? No. He's clearly not. He's moving well. 
there's some discomfort. He has a walking boot. So if they, if, if they have something, if he has something to his ankle or knee or whatever, it's minor. Um, we will get to this when we get to the SmackDown portion, but, uh, there is a big, they're, they're penciled in for, uh, what do you call that? Survivor Series, the match they're going to have. Oh, uh, War Games or whatever? War Games. So they've already penciled in who's in War Games. And the answer might knock your socks off. It's me versus Corey. Yeah. Team Corey versus Team Joel. I get to uh, pick first. New hook. Oh, I okay. I pick Ryuk. My cat Ryuk or the Ryuk? He's your cat. He's going to use scratch on New Hook. It's going to be super effective. It's a callback right there, folks. <laughs> uh, call back to the video I actually posted today on the yeah. I Bro just channel. saw that. Uh, New yeah, Hook figured, versus Mia Malik. Uh, I had like twelve matches recorded, so I'm posting one a day for the next like two weeks. No, yeah, why not? Last night was uh, Davy Boy Smith Jr. versus JP Sims. I didn't see that one though. Uh, you should you should definitely go watch it because there's some funny moments with Dave Boyce in it. He no, actually Dave. splits his pants open in, in the crotch. <laughs> uh, good old Dave Boyce. Uh, what would the Maritimes do without Dave Boyce? Pro probably just like the same, just without Dave Boyce, which wouldn't be as fun because we love Dave Boyce. We do. Uh, so that was all for news and notes. Uh, moving on to some NXT. Uh, first match on NXT, Charlie Dempsey defeats Tony D'Angelo to win the Heritage Cup. Um, so this is Dempsey's second, right? Technically, yes. Because they, they had won it group. as a group. Um, Dempsey needs to be a badass that just says, screw this cup. Let's throw it in the garbage and throws it in the garbage. It's useless. I, I've said it once. I've said, I'll say it a thousand times. Why have that cup? Yeah, it's it'd be a different story if it was a belt. But as yeah. a cup, it's like you should win it. Let's just say the tournament's today. I win it today. Next year, I get a chance to defend it next year. I yeah. should get like a, a buy but for the first round and what, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, along gimmick, along. gimmick it some way. Like the, the, the heritage cup has its own rules. Like it's a round system, like the old British rules. You could have the same results with a belt and it would be a lot less of a pain to carry around. Yeah. Can you imagine a hockey team? Like, let's say who won the cup this year, the Panthers. Imagine they're lugging that cup to every Every, Every game. game, like we're the champions, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they get the, th that'd be interesting though. When you get to they keep defend the, cup the championship the... every game, <laughs> not every game, it's like they're the champions, so they get to keep the cup with them for the year. But then the Hall of Fame would be like, Well, we want the cup back. Funny enough, did you watch the video I sent in the group chat yesterday or this morning with uh Punk and Luongo? I saw that yesterday on Raw. Um that that's pretty cool uh punk's not a florida fan or a vancouver fan but who doesn't love R roberto luongo one of the greatest goaltenders of all time yeah it's a shame he didn't win the cup back in uh 2011. he did win the cup though this year i know i'm happy for that. at least he got it you know it's no, like he did he He's like Carey oh, Price. If you ever Montreal wins the cup, he better be in the organization as like a, an agent or, or not an agent, but as a, a fucking scout or whatever they're called to, to say that he won the cup as well. Yeah. Did he call it a career yet or is he coming he's, back? He's on. A, he won't come back. He's on yeah. LTIR right now. He's technically still a part of the Canadians. He won't come back. Like they, they got Jacob it. Fowler waiting in the wings. Uh, Montreal is going to be, they're going to be fine. We were just talking about Montreal right before the recording too. 
Oh, yes. Patrick Liney. <laughs> or as my buddy Buddha used to say, Patrick Lanny. <laughs> I was like, who? Patrick Lanny. I'm like, you mean Liney? Yeah, Lanny. <laughs> See, I would have just called him Patrick Lane. Lane, yeah. Um, I, I like Patrick Liney. Uh, had a, he's going to need a comeback year. You don't think it's going to happen. I'm... Definitely I'm not hopeful. this year. I'm hopeful that he does something. Um, oh, I'm but hoping it, was... it works out for you guys. Like, no, you don't. Screw Montreal, right? <laughs> no, I don't. I don't mind Montreal. You need to join us, man. You're in too much pain. I am in very, very a lot of pain. I couldn't even speak right to say how much pain I was in there. So, yeah. Yeah, so let's just move on. We don't we don't uh, need to, to focus on pain. It's a happy place. Lexus King defeats Eddie Thorpe. So they're still feuding over music. Yep. Booker T and Edge feuded over shampoo. King and Thorpe feud over music. Uh, it's rock and roll versus whatever the hell Thorpe listens to. Yeah, whatever it is. To Jesus Christ, man, if that's music... My, the rippling sounds of bubbling ass is is the new song. Uh, Lola Vice defeats Tatum Paxley. Um, you know, every week we hear these names. Mm, the the winners change a little bit, but yeah, it gets very repetitive. Very. Uh, Oba Femi defeats Otis. Otis from Raw? Yep. Okay. Was this a title match? It didn't say it was. But I think Otis just got a title match, didn't he? From Oba Femi like a few weeks ago? I have no clue. Maybe it was like the first American Bash or... Maybe. Their last, their last pay-per-view maybe. I don't remember. I remember he either, him. He either just yeah. got one or is getting one. I okay. These weeks just blend together sometimes. Sometimes I remember Oba Femi defending the title against somebody, but it's a blank face right now. Uh, Izzy Dame defeats Brinley Reese. Yes, she. They did. And to cap off NXT, Chase U defeated Axiom and Frazier to win the tag titles. So I didn't watch NXT. Was there a split between Axiom and Frazier? Because they've been teasing that. I don't think there was. So Chase U, that's uh, Andre Chase and... I think it was Ridge Holland that won. Ridge Holland, yeah. Ridge Hollins and Andre Chase, or was it the other guy? I think it was Ridge. No, no, but I know it was Ridge, but was it with Andre Chase? I think so. Okay. The um, one that always wears the red sweater, I think. Yeah, that's Chase, the former, uh, what was it, Bravado brother. Harlem and Lancelot Bravado. What the fuck? Those were their names, the tag team back in the day, the Bravado brothers. The Do you remember... Uh, when AEW did uh, the total deletion matches, the, the cinematic match with Matt Hardy. Yep. And there was this random tag team in there with little speed. Those are the Bravado brothers. Okay. And I don't think I don't think they're actually brothers, but Andre Chase was part of it. I think the other guy retired, so he had to find something else to do and became a university uh, professor. Uh, them winning the tag titles, I don't see them holding them for very long. I don't either. I, There's uh, plenty of other tag teams, even on NXT. Because yeah. you have the OC that's there. Uh, I mean, throw Otis and Tozawa there for a while. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, There are two that I see on the next round of cuts. How Tozawa's lasted this long, I, I'll never know. Like, wasn't Tozawa part of the original Cruiserweight Classic? I think he was. So that was what 2015. We're almost in 10 years of Tozawa in the WWF, uh, WWE. Yeah. My bad. Uh, Get the F out. 
Get the F out. WWF is way better than WWE. <laughs> Storyline wise, I'll say yes. Wrestling wise, I'll say no. Um, I'd agree with that. Or I should say athletic athletic ability. I'll say athletic that. ability, yeah. Oh, that for sure. If done right, WWE should have the greatest product ever right now because the ath the caliber of athlete that they have is second to none. In the 80s and 90s, it was more character based. Yeah, it was storyline based. It was character based. It was yeah. the show. The now show. it's all how many flips can you do? How high can you jump? And a lot of people hate that and say they're killing the business. And I've always been the guy on the other side going, or is it killing it or is it the evolution of the business? Because you can't do the same thing for. Look at Vern Gagne in the AWA. Did the same thing for 30 years. Where's Vern Gagne now? I mean, he's dead, but where's the AWA? Yeah. You know, the AWA. Things need to evolve. They can't just stay the same. Uh, If we'd still be in the freak looking big muscly guys, you'd only have, you know, Roman Reigns, Brock Lesnar, and Goldberg at the top and John Cena. (laughs) Roman. Roman's tall, he's big, but he wasn't he isn't a freaky looking like you look at Ultimate Warrior. Warrior had muscles in places where people didn't even have places. Rick Rude was another guy. Hogan was in great shape. Yeah. Not not thick, but shredded. Yes. Like he wasn't a big guy. Like Warrior and Hogan were like big guys that were in shape. Rude was like really like fit what were we uh, talking about before that the end of nxt how did we get to that just like we always do off topic yeah. jesus christ man you never even re- realize there's a recording thing on top there you just start talking and going with the flow and that's what makes a great episode in my opinion just conversations you know what's funny? If ever we start like just a a podcast, just talking podcast, we should literally call the pod. No, wait, there's already a podcast called Off Topic. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> offer topic. Uh, let's go. Let's go into Dynamite. Uh, Mercedes <clears throat> Monet successfully defends her TBS title against Hikaru Shida. Good match. Good match. Uh, Mercedes Monet's finishing move is the drizzling shits. Yeah, it's never looked it's, good. No, it's it's a very flashy move that she can't pull off. It reminds me of um, Taiji Ishimori. He had this move called the Superstar Elbow, which the Superstar Elbow would be he'd lay a guy on the ground, he'd jump, he'd spring off the rope like a, hand, a springboard hand spring, whatever they call it. Springboard, oh, fuck, what was it? <laughs> springboard, what is it called? Uh, the, the springboard handstand, I think it was. Into a, like, and then he'd do a backflip and he'd drop an elbow. So that was the superstar elbow, but he, it would be like bang, bang, and then he'd drop the elbow, but then he'd like land on his ass and then just like, eh, little piddly dink elbow that looked horrible. But the flash was what really made it. It's like Starship paint of uh, John Morrison. Yeah, that was... It looked great. He'd never hit it. He'd hit you with his, like, almost like a, at a chop. Like, if he'd land his ass on you. But it was like the original Swanton Bomb. It's It cuts the wind because the back of your head is hitting him. You know? Yeah, it's... Uh, talking about John Morrison and his Starship pain. Dick yes. Durning does. I know Dick Durning doesn't do the full on twist with it, but it looks so much better than John Morrison. Yeah. Um, because he Durning, it. Durning, it's just the split like in Moonsault, though, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Starship Pain is that with a corkscrew. And like I said, it looks flashy. It looks really good. Never hits your target, though. I remember sometimes the guy was like really close to the ropes and he'd have to like extend his arm just to make contact. And it's like, that looks like shit, man. Yeah. 
Uh, next match, Adam Page defeats Jay Lethal. As he should. Jay Lethal, um, you know, I think if you're Jay Lethal, you look back at your Ring of Honor career very fondly. Uh, this promotion gave you the chance to be a two-time world champion, maybe three. Um, I don't remember. He's a two-time world champion for sure. Um, in TNA, he was an X-Division champion. It was Black Machismo, a gimmick I always hated. Uh, parody gimmicks always annoyed me. Uh, Jay Lethal was so much better than a rip-off macho man. Yep. In AEW, he, he he's an older guy, and by saying that, he's, what, in his 40s? which is apparently old in wrestling. Um, Jay Lethal's role right now is this, being a mentor for the future stars. His time has come and gone, and he should be proud of his time. Being Ring of Honor World Champion back in the day held weight. So, you know. Yeah, he held the title for what? Was he the 700-day? No, no, that was Samoa no. Joe. So. Uh, he had it very long, though. He had a very long reign with it. Um, but... You know, that time has come and gone. The mid two thousands was huge for Jay Lethal. If they were. Uh, next match, it's a triple threat match. Orange Cassidy defeats Roderick Strong and Kyle O'Reilly. Let me just say this: conglomeration. Yeah, both sides. Move it's, on. It's, it's a great word. Uh, the Young Bucks defeat the Acclaim by disqualification. So you know this was, ain't over. It was for the, the tag titles. Yeah, you know it ain't over. Um, I think we probably get a three-way at Wembley. I think the, it's announced FTR. that it is. Yeah. Uh, we'll get into that after. Uh, in the main event, Wheeler Yuta defeats Swerve Strickland by disqualification. Is it time to say that this reign was a failure? Yes. I'm glad you said yes because I agree. Um, I, and I'm this disappoints the fuck out of me. I had I'm, high I'm, hopes since Swerve Strickland as champion. I'm happy that he won the title. Um, but I'll say because I said I said that when you first picked Swerve to win the title, I think it was a little too soon. Is it that, or is it a case of the babyface world champion doesn't work anymore? Chasing the belt is where you make your money. You look at I all the babyface world champions, they either turned heel, or it just it did not work. True. I would have had a. I would have had Swerve win this, like the title, October or November. Because I think that's what I had originally said. Yeah. I think it's another case of WWE syndrome where AEW has some guys that are due for a world title reign. Darby Allen. And I want to get to Darby Allen in a second. And we'll get to that when we get to the Jack Perry match against... Okay. I don't, I don't remember what his name is, but the new belt that he debuted and all that. But... Swerve Strickland as the champion, his his days are numbered. Uh, you know MJF's going to get it eventually back. They want to rehab that guy as best they can. Darby's due for a reign. What if Brian gets it? There are some guys, when Moxley comes back, how long before Moxley gets it? Because if there's one baby face that worked as world champion, it's John Moxley. Now, I, I hesitate to say CM Punk because he wasn't, there as champion long enough, but really for the short, yeah, he really wasn't there, but for the time that he did win, it worked. Uh, that's called being a draw right there. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but, um, with Swerve Strickland, it's one of those things. I think he has his reign and he goes back down the card. Yeah. It's unfortunate, but it is, la vie. it is Rampage. Uh, talking about them earlier, the conglomeration defeat the Butcher and the Outrunners. So is the Blade not there anymore? 
I don't know. I haven't seen him in months, really. I always remembered when Butcher and the Blade debuted and nobody knew who they were. Nobody. I think the Blade at one point was Pepper Parks or something like that. And he was with Cherry Bomb, which is uh, the bunny. And they had this like fitness gimmick or whatever, which is fine. And they're legit married in real life. And he, he had another gimmick in TNA that I don't remember his name. Um, but yeah, the, the, the butcher looks fantastic. You know, the, the bald head on top with the hair and the monocle. He just looks, Dude, he looks like tell he's like a metal, metal guy. He's in a Ben. I don't remember the name of his Ben. Yeah, but yeah. He's, he's, a, he's a musician as well. Um, the conglomeration has the coolest name right now. It's a it's a hilarious name, that's for sure. It's fun to say. Uh, next match: Nyla Rose defeats Erica Lay. Um, uh, I don't know who Erica Lay is, so Nyla Rose winning makes all the sense in the world. Uh, Nick Wayne defeats Kip Sabian. How come I can't remember who Kip Sabian is? Uh, he's, uh, he was an Oh, wait, the team. British guy, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, he, but, uh, him and, uh, uh, Penelope Ford, right? Yes, yes. Okay. I no clue he was still there. The one I thing I remember about Kip Sabian is he was doing, um, Twitch stream. Yep. And it was a video game Twitch stream. And somebody came on and said, ah, I, I love your wrestling or whatever. And he completely shot that down. He's like, we, we're not here. We don't talk wrestling here. This is about video games. And I was like, fuck this guy. And it wasn't me. I, I don't watch streams and all that. But, I you know, he, so. yeah, you're a wrestler. They're, they're not there to see you play video games. True. Um, but everybody has, like... Like, doesn't Miro do that too? The Twitch streams or whatever. Miro or they does did. it. Soraya, Soraya does it or did it. Funny enough, like Soraya's most watched Twitch stream moment is Alexa Bliss was on and like she was pissed drunk and took off her shirt, but she was wearing like a bikini top or whatever. Okay, Alexa did or Alexa did, yeah. Okay, well. If you can find me uh, the number of that episode, uh, I'll be on my way. Uh, next match, Roosh and Kyle Fletcher defeat Rhett Titus and KM. KM, Combat Mortal. Yes. And um, in the main event, Top Flight defeats... I don't. They're called MXM, but they, they're former Maximum Male Model. Maximum Male Model, yeah. Um, yeah, they found a little spot there. Uh, I'm, I'm happy for them. I, I am too. <clears throat> it's a gimmick that oh. never had the chance on WWE TV. And it's a gimmick that I don't think really will get a huge chance in AEW either. But no. It's a fun gimmick though. They're they're yep. funny. They're, you know, if it works, run with it. Um I remember a while back someone told me the last thing I want to do is this gimmick. And they had him doing that exact gimmick and that's what worked everything else he tried didn't work so if one thing works for you run with it because something else might not no exactly once you find something that people can get behind that's what you need to cash in on it, it always reminds me of that Bubba Ray story Bubba Ray Dudley where he's like I got into ECW I had the big hair the big mullet hair and the last thing I wanted to do is shave my head and call myself book book that's exactly what they made me do. <laughs> but the Dudley Boys are one of the best tag teams ever. Uh, I think we both... I know I did a top 10 tag teams and they were on it. I did a top 10... All my top... Tops video, I guess you're going to call them, because they're in all, all top 10s. I put them all as shorts, so one a day. And I did do my tag teams, and I don't remember if they were there or not. 
Spoiler alert, my favorite tag team of all time is Sabotage. Uh, my top 10, I think I had FTR as, as number one, but yeah, it's yeah. definitely Sabotage. Yeah, and uh, hopeful that they get back together, but hope that they don't kill their singles careers. So I think they got value in both. Both guys do. I do too. Both guys I do, too. do. Yeah. Uh, so getting into Collision. Uh, people collided. Heads up. Oh. I'm intrigued. Uh, Britt Breaker defeated. You're, you have a hard I time there, don't you? <laughs> Britt Baker defeated Harley Cameron. Um, Burke Burkle, uh, she defeated whoever. Um, listen, she's going to take on the champion. No, wait. She's taking on Mercedes, which is a, a champion. Um, th this feud is colder than a dead fish to me. Uh, they've done nothing. They've had her come out of the crowd. I'm not interested in seeing this match. Maybe Monet either. should win, and they should move from that feud immediately. Just like we're going to move on to the next match. Bam. Uh, Dustin Rhodes and Sammy Guevara defeated the Undisputed Kingdom to become the new Ring of Honor Tag Team Champions. So Dustin Rhodes... Or Runnels. The Rhodes or Runnels? Rhodes on TV, Runnels in real life. Okay. Um, he's a double champion. He, with the Von Eriks, he's a six-man champion. With Guevara, he's a tag team champion. Is this the real conglomeration? Why the hell is Guevara teaming up with Goldust? <laughs> I think... Am I wrong, uh, though? That's so bizarre. It's it's definitely a strange tag team, but I think this eventually leads to Dustin Rhodes dropping both sets of tag titles and maybe getting a Ring of Honor World Title run, and then that's where he ends off his career. Does he need it, or not even need it? Does he deserve it? He doesn't need it because he's always going to be remembered for Goldust. Yeah. And him getting a world title reign at that age. Him not getting him not getting a world title. I'll appreciate his career more than him winning a world title. Here's why. Not everybody should be a world champion. The very special should be your world champion. And it's fine if you're not a part of that special group. You can make another title. That title is important to me. I made this title. It's not the main event title. But it's important to me. I made this important. Goldust was Intercontinental Champion. He was a WWF Tag Team Champion. Which is fine. Fine. Him winning a world title screams... Tony Khan, come on. We're buddies now. Give me a world belt. It would. I, 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 I'm, if this happens, I'm totally against it. Fucking put Guevara as your world champion. Rehab him. Do something with him. Yeah, he was one of the pillars at one point. Exactly. And now he's the black sheep. You got fucking um, Jack Perry who's the TNT champion. You got MJF, who's uh, the American champion now and a former world champion. Darby Allen is a former two-time TNT champion and maybe three times coming up. We'll get to that. And tag team champion too. And with Sting, tag team champion. And so Jungle Boy as well, uh, Jack Perry. And he was with, the yeah. W champion. Um, and Guevara, he was TNT champion. And it's probably the worst one. Three fucking horrible reigns. Horrible. The title yeah, they played, never. Him and Cody played back and forth for a while. Yeah, and it, it was the belt was so devalued at that point in time, and that's really where we start to say this this belt sucks. Yeah, around the time where, right when Scorpio Sky won the title for the TNT title, I think. Like, is um, the Jack Perry thing next? Uh, not quite. Not quite. Keep going then. Hologram defeats and Helico. And Helico's still there. Interesting. 
And now Jack Perry defeats Danny Orion and debuts the new TNT belt. Does everybody get a fucking custom belt? Scorpio Sky gets a Lakers tribute belt. Cody had a, a, a red belt. Miro had a belt. Uh, now Jack Perry gets this belt. And so we we forgot to mention this last week, and I think it just went over our heads. Wembley, Perry's defending the TNT title against Darby. Yeah. So what, a couple weeks after that? This the, the only way this works is if Darby pulls an ultimate warrior, wins the TNT title, goes on double title match, unify the TNT title with the AEW world title, get rid of it. They're not even on I, TNT anymore. I like wouldn't the, be upset with that scenario at all. At all. Um, you know, just, just do an ultimate warrior. Just do that. Get rid of the belt. Have Darby be the final champion. He's one of your best champions. I think he was, wasn't he like the second long, or no, no, he was the longest reigning champion. He has the record, 186 days. Darby Allen is the longest reigning champion in TNT wow. title history. So it, all short reigns. Other than that, I think Miro had it for 145 days or 144 days. And um, what's his name? Uh, Wardlow had it for 136 days. I Those are the only he triple. Champion. He was champion three times. Three. That's what really? I mean about this belt. Three fucking reigns. Wow. He won the title, lost it, won it back, lost it three days later, then won it back, and it was a nothing reign again, and he lost oh, it to who, him, who knows. Him and Samoa Joe, right? Samoa Joe, yeah. And uh, then I think he finally lost to um, Powerhouse Hobbs. Yes, he was champion too. 42 yep. days. Uh, wow. Guevara had three reigns. Scorpio Sky had two reigns. Like, just, it went down and down and down. Like, I remember Cody and Brody Lee feuding for that belt in that dog collar match. That was, wow. Fucking incredible stuff. What a swan song for that, man. It was. But yeah, I, that, that's what I do. I fucking put the TNT title in the bin. I like I said, I wouldn't be upset with Perry uh, Darby winning the TNT title, winning the heavyweight title, and then just Unifying. making that belt go away. Uh, and by the way, the new belt that the uh, Jack Perry debuted looked like shit. He he, did you see the video of him making the belt? He Dar uh, Perry made the belt himself. Yeah, I sent you guys the video. Okay, that's where I saw it then, and it looks like <laughs> shit. It fucking looks like shit. Well, it's, it's spray, spray painted, painted black. Yeah. With like splotches of red on it. I oof, not on. It's a whole five dollar belt. Five dollar belt. We should do a five dollar belt. You we should do a, a cheap belt, like just a cheap fucking belt one day and have a contest to see who who would win it. Like like a fan contest. Like say you you the, the the funniest Tony Khan joke or something like that and the one that wins wins our shitty made belt that's made with $5. Literally just rip like <laughs> scrap take a $5 bill and just cut it up and here here's the belt. It's $5. <laughs> you take a a weightlifting belt and you just tape it tape $5. <laughs> Fun new belt coming up soon for the podcast. <laughs> uh, next up, Claudio Castagnoli defeats Leo Rush. Um, Claudio was a named guy. I, I don't know. I, I feel like he's floundering. Leo Rush, um, burnt his bridges in a lot of places. Uh, should keep his nose clean and uh, keep the job that he has. Mariah May defeats London Dior. As she should. She's challenging for the belt. FTR versus the acclaimed reach a time limit draw. And both teams, because this was to see who faced the Young Bucks, both teams will face the Young Bucks at all. In. So it got announced that it is a triple threat. So if I'm Tony Khan here, the Bucks lose the titles. It's the perfect time because the Bucks don't want to put anyone over, so you have one tag team pin the other. 
I'd have FTR say, win him. I'd say you give it to FTR, have them pin the acclaim. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Um, I just the Bucks are not draws as champion. Um, nope. It's funny how wrestling works, and how one year this wrestling promotion starts, it's new, it's exciting, it's out of this world. And five plus years later, you're like, where did they go wrong? Can I pinpoint the exact moment in time where I was like, I'm out. I around the time. Yeah. It's around when Adam page won the title. I was still enjoying it back then. It was I think it, like, it, it, I'd say two months, three months into his reign. I think for me, it doesn't go to the heavy, the world title. It goes back to that TNT title. And when they just started to make a mess out of that belt and then bringing in more belts and bringing in more belts and then ring of honors in AEW. And now they got the ring of honor belts and they got all that. I think the best thing AEW has done in recent years is the Samoa Joe title reign. Right now, it's still my favorite AEW world title reign. I think Samoa Joe, if that's his last world title, he had a damn good run with it. He did great with it. Uh, next match. Oh, there's no next match. <laughs> Still another another AEW show, though. Ring of Honor. Uh, Mark Briscoe successfully defends his title against Johnny TV. I don't think these are in order of how they happen. Okay. Here's my thing. I love Mark Briscoe. Love him. Jay Briscoe never passes away. He's never sniffing that belt. It's a case of Ray winning the world heavyweight title. Perfect. Um, much like Mark Briscoe, I love Ray Mysterio. I think Ray Mysterio, I, I'm watching ECW in 1995 right now. And the matches he's having with Psychosis unbelievable I, I gotta send you that link all right just great ecw stuff um but mark briscoe being the world champion feels bizarre to me and sending the belt from mark briscoe to gold dust doesn't do much for me there either who in ring of honor can be your next like eye-catching champion because Kingston wasn't it Claudio it was new Jericho was like another belt Jericho it almost pisses me off because it's like a oh, belt that I can put my name to it's like him is the the FTW champion right now why do you need that belt why do you need the ring of honor world belt you know this um, makes no look, sense to me just looking quick at like notes and stuff from past ring of honors to pick out who could be a champion uh from the last three ring of honor shows i'd say the most likely guys would be like shibata or like brian cage if you finally give him a chance cage would be good I think I, yeah, I wouldn't be upset with Shibata as well, though. I think Kasuyori Shibata sort of got a raw deal, but also at his own hands. The new three musketeers were going to be Shinsuke Nakamura, Hiroshi Tanahashi, and Katsuyori Shibata. Shibata decided, hey, I'm going to do MMA instead. And he left pro wrestling and came back many years later as the wrestler, Katsuyori Shibata. Did a stupid move versus Kazuchika Okada that nearly cost him his life. Got a subdermal hematoma on the head. Had to have a portion of his skull removed to have brain surgery. So, as much as I love Shibata, he brought this on himself. If he never does those shoot headbutts, 
He's probably won the IWGP heavyweight title and is remembered as one of the all-time greats. He's now remembered as a what if wasting away in AEW and Ring of Honor. Yep. Uh, next match. Hold on. I forgot my glasses. Cameron defeats Viva Van. Viva Van and Harley Cameron. Um, Harley Cameron, that's the one that's with uh, Soraya, right? With Right, yeah. Okay. So it makes sense. Viva Van, uh, Viva La Bam. <laughs> uh, next match, Serpentico defeats Griff Garrison. I had no fucking clue both these guys were still there. Griff Garrison is former, what was it, the, the Varsity Blondes with Brian Pillman Jr., now Lexus King. Serpentico faced off against Channing Decker in UCW a few years ago. And Griff um, Garrison very much looks like Joey White. <laughs> he fucking does. Holy I shit. I never put the fucking holy shit. That is bizarre. They could they could work brother they could work a brother tag team. They really could. They could. They, they holy definitely shit. could. I love Joey White, though. Griff Garrison, not so much. Joey White's a great guy. And in, well, not the main event, because I said, I don't think this is the this is the order the matches happen, but Anthony Henry and Beef, you heard it right, Beef. Beef. Vince McMahon's Vinny, favorite. Vinny Massaro and Dante Leon. Dante Leon sounds familiar. Yeah, we I want to talk about Beef. There's a lot of beef in that ring, pal. Uh, Vince McMahon and his beef. There's one Royal Rumble. I think it's 90, 93 or 94, where it's him and Ted DiBiase on commentary. It has to be 94 because DiBiase's on commentary, and I know 93 is still wrestling. And they say beef like a thousand times. And if it's not beef, it's there's some tonnage in the ring. There's a lot of beef in the corner there. It's like, what the hell? Like, some tonnage. Some ton there's some tonnage in the ring. So yeah, beef. Did beef win? They won. Him and Anthony Henry. Anthony Henry sounds familiar. Yeah, he's related to Henry Anthony. Ah, that's what it is. Moving into some TNA. Uh we have another qualifying match for the Ultimate X where Riley Osborne defeats Josh Terry and Chris Bay. Josh Terry. That sounds so familiar. Obviously, Riley Osborne's from NXT. Yeah. Um, you know, the working agreement still works. Uh, next segment that happens... Uh, Santino's in the ring. Matt Cardona comes out. Cardona has to sign a contract to fight PCO. Uh, yeah. Or if he doesn't sign the contract, he goes to jail for attacking Santino next last week. That's a weird storyline, but uh, did he sign? We will know next week because he's getting ah. his lawyers to check it out. Ah, Make the people uh, wait. I like it. Yes. Next match, Giselle Shaw defeats Tasha Steeles. All right. Moose defeats Santana. So Mike Santana, right? Yeah. They've been feuding a little bit. I, I don't know why Moose hasn't gotten his rematch for the belt. Um, it's something to do, I guess. Uh, Jason Hotch defeats Rich Swan and Ace Austin in another qualifying match for Ultimate X. Good for him. Deserves it. And in the main event, uh, Nick Nemeth was defending his TNA title against Josh Alexander, and they went to a time limit draw. Someone pitched an idea. Because odds are Alexander's winning that belt. And someone pitched for a special in TNA or NXT or whatever to have a reuniting the North. 
because they would both be champions. They would. One's NXT champion, one's TNA champion. Um, I like that idea. I like the North. Thought they were a great tag team. If you want like a small pay per view to do, do like a Survivor Series NXT versus TNA. Exactly, or or team Josh Alexander versus team whoever, or team Adam uh, Adam Ethan Page. Ethan Page. Ethan I knew Knight. it was a page. <laughs> I have, you know, just have the North uh, team up in one team, and that's. I'd like that. Uh, let's move on to some SmackDown. SmackDown starts off with Nia Jax in the ring, and which is never a good her, thing. She gets her first challenger. Meechin attacks Nia Jax. Nobody's looking forward to this match. Not at all. Um, first match: Carmelo Hayes defeats Andrade. Uh, we we've mentioned that about Andrade. Uh, he just doesn't fit. Just does not fit. Don't know how you can make him fit. But as a top guy, he's just not there. Not at all. You make him fit on WWE speed, apparently. Really? Oh, excuse me. Uh, uh, Blair Davenport defeats Naomi. I like that. I like Blair Davenport. I think you got a potential future star on the main roster with her. Um, and then a future champion. Uh, I like Blair Davenport. I love Naomi, too. Naomi's a legend. Um, apparently one of the nicest people to meet. I've heard, yeah. Uh, uh, next match, Kevin Owens defeats Grayson Waller. As he should. He's challenging for the belt. And I think Austin Theory is the one that's going to be turning heel because uh, I actually watched a segment on SmackDown where he, Austin Theory was like the look he was giving. That would be the worst thing ever to put Grayson Waller as a baby face. But at the same, it's yin yang. Both guys are detestable heels. Do you do think, an all heel thing where they're just feuding, but they're just both heels? I think Waller would make a better face than Theory. Yeah. I think that. Here's my take on Theory. I don't think he's good at anything. He's a good wrestler, but as a personality, is ever remember when he had the selfie gimmick? Yep. And nobody fucking cared about that. Vince McMahon and his giant golden egg. What the fuck was that? Uh, next match. It was a number one contenders match for to see who was going to challenge for the tag titles. The Street Profits defeat DIY. A little surprising there. Um, I think what we talked about last week might be happening sooner rather than later. I think DIY is on borrowed time. I think we're going to see Gargano and Champa feuding sooner rather than later. Take my money. Yes. Yes, if they and can have half of what they did in NXT, we're fine. They literally could main event a pay-per-view. Yep. Oh, for sure. For sure. A pay-per-view where you don't advertise a title match? Hell yeah. A blood feud? These two are tailor-made to main event a bad blood in a Hell in a Cell match. Yes. Uh, to end off SmackDown, the Bloodline attack Roman Reigns. So, oh, geez, I'm sorry. I am exhausted right now, and I keep yawning. So very much apologizing to everybody. Um, The... Civil War War Games match apparently is already penciled in. And it is going to be Jacob Fatu, Tama Tonga, Tonga Loa, and Hikuleo versus the original Bloodline. Roman, Solo, and the Usos. They do nothing on they do nothing by accident on these shows with the Triple H run thing. They don't do 
anything on, on by accident. And, and you Solo must be talking about the, the the so Solo did a promo. I don't remember if it was this week or last week, but he said that if Roman can beat him. He will acknowledge Roman Reigns as his if, original If Roman tribal can chief. take back the Ula Fala, I think it's Ula called. Ula Fala, yeah. Yeah. He See, will, I yeah. will acknowledge him as the tribal chief. I think this is a case of Solo Sokoa. They tried and it didn't work. And I think he's going back down the card. I think. Like the original plan for the war games I had heard was a 10 man with Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens involved in it. So it would have been Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens, the Usos, and Roman versus Solo and whoever. Now it looks like Jacob Fatu is going to be the man that has his own bloodline. And the OG bloodline is going to feud with Jacob Fatu. And that leads to WrestleMania, Roman Reigns versus Jacob Fatu. That could very well main event night one. Could be match. They might event. even. It could. Jacob Fatu is amazing. He lost so much weight. It's so weird to see what he looked like in MLW because he had the Samoan body, you know, yep. big, heavy, the, the, the heavy buttocks, uh, heavy, if you heavy, will. But- <laughs> the big butt, there you go. And now he just looks fantastic. It's all it these looks- children he's popping out. He's 32 years old. He has like seven or eight kids. 17 kids. No, 75 don't. kids. 758 kids. Wow. 751. <laughs> That's for SmackDown. Uh, moving on to Raw. Uh, it starts off with Gunther and Ludwig Kaiser attacking Randy Orton. Um, I think it's a, a good first challenger for Gunther. I think if you're Triple H, Cody's not really your pet project. Gunther is. Mm-hmm. So, because Cody's already established and blah, blah, blah. You know the the old drill. I think Cody getting the belt, it's Cody Rhodes, he's over, blah, blah, blah. I think with Gunther, I think Triple H looks at that and he's like, I have to make this better than Cody's even. He needs to be the man. He needs to have a legendary title reign in a good seven or eight month period. And I think that's the best way to do it, is to make it not too long, have him... Defeat Randy Orton because Randy Orton's a credible challenger. Now, the second you would have told me his first title defense is against Carmelo Hayes, Carmelo Hayes, which Which could be, but no, but you, I remember some guys getting title shot. It's not like there's a big difference between a title reign now and a title reign in the 80s where. Hulk Hogan or Ultimate Warrior or Randy Savage are the champions, and it doesn't matter who they're against. As long as it's a big bad guy. Can be Rick Rude, can be King Kong Bundy, can be Andre the Giant, can be Big John Studd, can be Earthquake, can be Ted DiBiase, can be Mr. Perfect, can be anybody. You're there to see the babyface world champion win. Now it's different, and it started to get different with matches like Hogan and Andre, and Hogan and Savage, and Warrior and Hogan, and Warrior and Savage, where there is an importance here. But now, now there's a big importance on it. And if you have a title defense, like didn't Cody defend the title against Logan Paul? Who cares? That's not a credible challenger. No, so, and I think moving from this point as well, uh, Gunther will have another credible challenger right after Randy Orton uh, in Sami Zayn, the guy who defeated him for the IC title. Why not? He he beat him for the belt. So it's a revenge thing for, for Gunther. It sells itself. Listen, I've said it once. I'll say it a thousand times. I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of Gunther. This title reign, 
done right can change that. Uh, first match of Raw, Sheamus defeats Pete Dunne. Uh, there's a storyline with Sheamus having a broken hand. And the ending was clever. So the end, did you watch the end? I I just watched little clips of Raw. Okay. So Sheamus' broken hand is wedged in between the turnbuckle pad and the exposed turnbuckle. And Pete Dunne is kicking it and kicking it and kicking it. Finally, the referee pushes away Pete Dunne. And shame as Pete Dunn is coming back towards Seamus, Seamus pulls, rips the turnbuckle pad off, gets a running start, broke kick, one, two, three. Clever finish. Never seen that before. I'll definitely have to go back and like watch the video of it. Yeah. Next match, Ivy Nile versus Maxine Dupree ends in a no contest when Abby the Witch... Uh, comes out and the white six attack. Mm -hmm. um, what are they? American called? made. American made. Um, it looks like Gacy, Loomis, and Rowan are going to go maskless. Yep. Um, you were asking last week if Abby the Witch it was a mask or face paint. It's a mask. It's I seen it this week. Uh, it's weird because it's like it. And I'm not shitting on her here. I think her gimmick is really cool. <laughs> it looks like there's a little thread, like a Halloween mask going behind. Well, it's, yeah, that's how they're, they have like a thing that attaches like almost their forehead and have yeah. that like. Yeah. Um, so Abby the Witch, and they, they're finally acknowledging that it is Nikki Cross. Yep. She wears the mask still. Maybe she'll take it off when she wrestles. It looks like Uncle Howdy. Bo Dallas is going to be wrestling with that mask on. Uncle Howdy last night with the mask on, the dreads, the cut off sleeve shirt, fucking looks incredible as a character. He, he, I remember Bo Dallas in NXT as the NXT champion. This is, we're going back over 10 years ago. We got a Bo Leave. Um, he was so good in that role, and it was a role made for NXT. He came to the main roster, floundered. Did nothing. Was in the B team and all that stuff. This is his second chance. The unfortunate thing is his second chance comes after his brother passed away. Yep. Uh, so after this, Drew McIntyre accepts Punk's challenge for a strat match at Bash in Berlin. So I, I never thought about Bash in Berlin. I think this is brilliant. Because I think CM Punk gets the win here. He has to. He has to if you your end goal is the Elimination Chamber. Or not the Elimination. The Hell in a Cell. So Hell in a Cell at Bad Blood is their, is their blow-off. It's the trilogy. And I don't think Punk needs to win this feud. I think Drew McIntyre gets the win in Hell in a Cell. But I do think that we have a very bloody strap match that CM Punk wins. I think CM Punk wins. He gets his bracelet back, moves on to a Hell in a Cell, and a great way to finish off that Hell in a Cell would be Seth Rollins distracting CM Punk, mm -hmm. then you go right into the Rollins feud from there. See, now you're thinking like a old school promoter would, because every ending has a beginning. Exactly. And that's the best way to book wrestling is there is no end. There's just a new beginning. You know, nowadays you have WrestleMania and with WrestleMania, you need the ending. You need it to be the, the final chapter. But back in the day, you know, Leo Burke would challenge Cuban assassin or they'd have a match. And all of a sudden killer Carl group comes out, cost Leo Burke the match. Now you've transitioned to Leo Burke and killer Carl group while Cuban assassin is going to face. Leo Burke's brother, the beast, because the beast needs to get revenge on Leo Burke. It, it, it goes round in circle. That's what makes wrestling so great. I can't even talk anymore. I'm so fucking happy about this. And you still got to record after we're done too. I still got to record after the, the, the Tuesdays when I am double booked on Tuesdays, they are the worst, but at least I'm doing it with two of the best guys. I know uh, yourself and Corey. 
I, I don't know anybody that calls me a good guy. I've been called a lot of things. Barely a guy, that thing, uh, the guy that should have his face circumcised. That's my favorite, by the way. I mean, it almost had, oh, not circumcised. You almost shaved that beard off. We were only about you, 300 people away. <laughs> you were like, well, then live stream, there was all 500 of those count. Fuck you. He was uh, doing everything time. to get that beard off. Uh, it would have been fun. Next time. Uh, next match, Odyssey Jones and the New Day defeat the Final Testament. And uh, you... I must say, go back, watch the match, and look at Woods' gear. It's fabulous. Woods and Kofi, it's Ninja Turtles inspired. Yeah, I like the purple better than the green, obviously. So but... It was Michelangelo and Donatello. I've always been a Michelangelo fan. Um, I, he was the I've party been dude. A Donatello fan, so... Have you ever seen that video of how the Ninja Turtles got their mask and their stick. It's like, I think it's like a, a college humor or something like that. No. And he's like, uh, Master Splinter's like giving them the mask and the sword and he's like, or the weapons. And he's like, oh, you have this, this and that. You're a leader. So you get the blue, blah, 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 blah. And then he does everything. He's like, all right, let's go eat pizza. And Don Hill's like, wait, Master Splinter, what about me? He's like, oh yeah, that's right. You're, you're a thing too. And he's like, uh, just, uh, Take that dirty diaper over there and poke holes in it and takes a <laughs> purple dirty diaper. It's like, ah, oh, there's shit in it. It's like, and uh, th there's a stick right there. You use that. You, 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 you know, you you do machines, I guess. It's the funniest thing ever. I got to send that to you. Uh, the next match, Bronson Reed defeats The Miz in a no disqualification. He hits, I think, two tsunamis, and then Braun Strowman comes out to stop him. Braun Strowman. So Gosh. it's going to be Braun, St Braun Strowman versus Bronson Reed. Battle of the Braun. No brains whatsoever. Big meaty um, man slapping meat. There you go. That ain't a Big E thing. That's a Joel quote. Should be on a t-shirt. Big E didn't get, come up with this. Joel did. Um, Hell, man. I think Braun... Uh, Braun... Braun... Strowman. I I fucking I think I had a stroke there. I'm a pod mouth today, aren't I? Apologies, ladies and gentlemen. I think he's a tra he's a guy just he's a body. I think I would, uh Bronson have, Reed just have, destroys him. I would have Bronson Reed win, obviously. Six tsunami splashes and uh you know, it's funny. Pre pandemic, this guy was the future of WWE. Got the universal title, beat Goldberg for it. Was gone for a year. Can't find anything to do for him. It's weird. Uh, Talking about Bronson Reed here. Uh, he posted a picture with his wife. And did you see CM and CM Punk's comment on it? <laughs> Tsunami? Like, yeah. <laughs> uh, Punk is so good. Um, uh, Punk's, Punk's social media game is very strong. I I'm happy that Punk is at a place where he's happy. Um, you know, we saw it with the ultimate warrior when he came back to the WWE and died days later, you know, made amends and all that with CM Punk, he made amends and, uh, you know, he seems to be very happy and content with life. I think, uh, the one thing that he can thank AEW for is, you know, finding his passion for wrestling back and his hatred for Tony Khan and the barely boy, the hardly boys. Uh, next segment, the Judgment Day beat down Damian Priest and Rhea Ripley. So, last week you mentioned the street trash thing, so that's legit. I know. Um, I don't know if they're going to still run with it, but as of last week, they were going to roll with it. Now, that was yep. supposed to debut this week. They're, they're going to have a new name. They're going to have a new name. I don't know if it's going to be Street Trash anymore. But Street Trash, if, if plans would have continued as is, they were supposed to change their name this week. So maybe Cooler Heads prevailed. But fuck, man. Street Trash. I mean, 
I kind of get it. It's like an edgier name. Yeah, but... and wrestling with the bros is going to be toilet puke. You know, this is to- a good toilet. name for a metal band. <laughs> a, a punk band. <laughs> oh, yeah, that, yeah, actually, toilet puke for a now, punk what, band. What was it? You ever see uh, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia? <laughs> they're, they're tra- oh, dude, it's the best. One of my all time favorite shows. And they're going to all start a band, but they all have like Charlie's like a Bob Dylan inspired guy, and uh, Mac is like a punk guy, and they're like, they're, we're going to be the. the <laughs> And Frank is like this old school guy. And he's like, the name of our band is going to be the Pecan Sandies. And Mac is like, no, we're Chemical Toilet. <laughs> uh, it's just, it's one of those shows where once you start, you can't stop. It's like a Lay's potato chip. You just, it's you so funny. No, it's so fucking funny. It's so good. The first season is weird, but the second season, Danny DeVito joins as Frank. And it just, a legend is born in TV history. I, I definitely have to check it out at some point. Absolutely. And I'm starting a new segment on mainstream wrestling. Scare the shit out of someone. I know you're watching, Jason. Hi. Hello. <laughs> uh, let's do that once a week. We'll pick a random right. person. I, I'm okay with picking Jason every week. I love Jason. All right. Jason, watch out. We're going to call you out every week now. Yeah. MC Corey is coming for you with his rap facts. Rap facts number two. I don't have any more rap facts. Whoa. He just blew my mind. Blew your mind. Imagine what Jason's doing right now. He's probably working on his new website that he has going on. Fuck yeah, man. I love Jason. He posted, he posted on Facebook earlier. He said something about a website. or I, I love Jason, too. Yeah, Jason is such podcast. a... Probably the biggest supporter of the podcast. Such a talented artist, too. Just a I don't know, great between, guy. Between Jason, Connor, and Kit, I think those like are our yeah. top three. Yeah. Let's have a three-way match with them. Winner's the biggest and fan. Gets the belt. Winner gets the belt. There you go. All right. Well, but Marcus Burke, uh, Rob, uh, Rugged Rick Owens, uh, whoever, whichever promoter, Ryan Freed, you want to book the match. Uh, Joel will be the referee. Uh, Corey okay. will be the ring announcer. I can only count Just, to two, though. Well, that's fine. We'll do it a one-count match. And okay. uh, I'll be in the crowd because I just want to enjoy that one. Uh, next match, Alba Fire and Isla Dawn. I th- think it was a title match. Defend their, their title successfully against Damage Control and Pure Fusion Collective. Jason. <laughs> there you go. I got my scare in too. <laughs> in the main event, Randy Orton defeats Ludwig Kaiser. Of course he did. You know what's you know what's just could have been better than that? Jason! <laughs> <laughs> yes jason uh but that's it for this episode this week you have anything yes else yes it is you? um thank you all for listening watching commenting subscribing subscribing liking and sharing and follow not and like the new facebook page facebook page uh don't trust Hulk Hogan. Never trust Hulk Hogan. Never trust Hulk Hogan. Brother. Like he's oh, not he even your brother. No, he's I I was I don't know. I was crushed when I learned that as a kid. I know. I, Actually, I, I, I was I was excited that he wasn't my brother. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll see you in the next one. Peace. Jason. <laughs>